All right, now that we got it jacked up and on jack stands, we're gonna start on the, um, the upper part of the strut. Let me uh, turn this turn this thing around. All right, now that we got it jacked up and on jack stands, we're gonna start up here. We're gonna remove two 10 millimeter bolts. First, you gotta remove these clips. First thing we gotta do is remove these black clips. One, two, three, four, five, there's six of them. We remove those and then there's gonna be these 10 millimeter upper strut plastic bolts. Alright, so we're gonna remove these six plastic clips that are holding the plastic cover on. I just use a, it's a 10 millimeter uh, socket. I'm just gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to take these bolts off. Once you get them loose by hand or with the socket, they'll just come off by hand. Lift this up. here. It's already loose. I just did it with my hand. I remove this upper strut plastic piece because we're going to put that back on later. And just repeat on the other side. See these ones aren't even that tight. I just did it with my hand. But if they're tight, use a 10 millimeter and socket or wrench. So we can get access to the upper strut bolts. Yeah, I've noticed on the couple I've worked on that these these bolts are just hand tight from the factory. Okay, now using a 13 millimeter socket or wrench. I'm going to loosen the upper strut bolts. Just loosen them. And actually, I'm going to remove two of them and just uh, keep one in there loose to hold it in there until I get the bottom of the strut disconnected. Then it'll just come out by hand. You gotta keep these nut, these bolts because we're gonna get reused to attach the upper strut spacer <clears throat> to the top of the um, strut itself with the spacer. It reuses these factory um, these factory bolts. So these the factory bolts will be used to mount the lift spacer. This one I'm just gonna keep loose. Just repeat on the other side. So you just you can remove two out of the three to keep the other one loose. That we'll take out later by hand. So the first thing we're going to do is disconnect the bolt for the brake line. It's right there, either 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths. We're going to take this bolt out and we're going to go 
over here and take the 18 millimeter bolt nut off the sway bar. And these are 21 mil or 13 sixteenths. Remove those and then remove the tie rod, tie rod nut. That's a 15 millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and remove those and then separate. Look down here, there's an ABS sensor right here. Where's it at? There it is. ABS sensor right there. I'm going to go ahead and unhook that and then unhook it from the bracket right here. So first thing first, we're going to loosen and remove this uh, CV nut right here. It's a 32 millimeter. Go ahead and remove that nut first. nut on flush and then just tap it with a hammer to break it loose. Okay. And we're going to remove the 8 millimeter bolt or 5 sixteenths. Holds the brake line to the bracket. Just remove this out of the way. I'm going to remove the upper sway bar nut. It's an 18 millimeter. Yeah, it should just be loose. It should come right out. You can't take it all the way out until we remove the strut. Now remove the tie rod nut, 15 millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and smack it with a hammer. The spindle itself. Pop right out. Move that out of the way. And then we gotta unplug our ABS sensor. If you get down in there, there it is. So we just unplugged the ABS sensor and take it out of the bracket. Alright, so we got the tie rod disconnected, the ABS sensor unplugged out of the way, the sway bar nut off the sway bar roof, um, the brake line is loose. So now we just gotta take these two nuts off right here, 21 millimeter. Just kind of get it loose and then double check um, our CV to make sure our CV is loose right here. CV nut back off. So we took the CV, we pushed it back through, and then we just unbolted the strut. You gotta move it out of the way just so it doesn't hit the boot. So now that's disconnected. Okay, now that we got the CV disconnected from the spindle. Just be careful when you're taking this strut out so it doesn't hit the CV boot, okay? So we got it loose, there's that one bolt that's holding it up in there. So we're gonna go back up and take, um, take that upper bolt off so we can remove the strut. Okay, 
Yeah, line it up. Make sure the holes line up. So just make sure your holes line up. Use the factory bolts. They'll slide right in there. Just get them started one at a time. And what I use, since it's not that much space to get a socket in there, I'll use just a opening wrench or a ratchet wrench. So tighten these, tighten these snug with just your hands. Should be good. All right, so this is the bottom of the strut. This is the part that has to be ground down. So I'm going to mark it with a, a pen. Let's mark it with a pen. Kind of just like just this area right here. This is all where we have to grind it. Just a little bit. I'll show you after. Okay, so this is what it should look like with the spacer on it. Just like that. So now we're going to tighten, tighten these bolts up with a wrench. They don't have to be super tight, just nice and snug. The top's going to want to turn on you. Just kind of hold it with the other hand. Here's Tighten as much as you can. Go around and check. Make sure they're all good. All right, they're all good. So now we're going to take this strut and go put it back on the car. All right, so this is the bottom of the strut. This is the part that has to be ground down. So I'm going to mark it with a, a pen. Let's mark it with a pen. Kind of just like just this area right here. This is all where we have to grind it. Just a little bit. I'll show you after. Okay, you just have to grind it. This is just a flapper wheel, like a sanding disc on a grinder. Um, I'm just going to grind. So that's literally all it needs. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of grinding to clear that CV at full droop. So when you take your shut off, the two farthest spread bolts right here are gonna be in line with the spindle like right here. So the way I made the upper spacers is I rotated them 180 degrees. So you're going to have to turn this, turn this to line it back up with the top on the car. So basically you're going to put this right here. So there you go. I just turned it by hand. So the, that this used to be here. Now it's over there. This is the driver's side. It tells driver side because it has a sway bar bolt bracket right here. Alright, so I'm going to touch it up with the stuff I use on the steel. That's it. Rest prevention. Just the way it looks. So this is a first edition inch and a quarter. Um, 
I don't know if I have a two inch around here. I don't think I have a two inch leader around, but this is an inch and a quarter. Alright, so once you get the strut spacer on, you're going to need to rotate this upper top 100, 180 degrees so the bolts line up on top. It just twists. It's hard to do with one hand. I'm trying to film with one hand. So I can set this up. I can't tell if you can see it. Just rotate, just rotate this 180 degrees and then it'll be lined up so when you put it up in there. Okay, now that you have it pushed through, the bolts should be right here. I got one started right here just to hold it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get the other one pop through here. I'm just using my knee to pop it up here since I'm filming with one hand. Just put those on. Just put those on snug for right now. Okay, now you gotta push down on the spindle and then put this lower bolt in. And you gotta be really careful to not, it's hard to see, to not, it's so hard by one hand. Try not to hit the CV boot, okay? Okay, now you got these two bolts in, right here, right here, you made sure that your CV boot, everything cleared, nothing hit, make sure your CV's started, through here, looks like it started, and go ahead and put the nut back on it. And tighten that up, go ahead and tighten the CV up. Here, put our, uh, our nuts back on here. Tighten those up. And before you get the tie rod on, um, go ahead and turn this and bring the sway bar back up. Put it right in here. Hold up. Stand by. All right, so I just tried to put the sway bar bracket on, but see it's still too tall. It's all the way drooped out. Um, I need to go take it off the other side first. Okay, so I jacked up underneath the lower arm and lifted it up. So I put the sway bar back on. So the sway bar should go right back in. Right in. You shouldn't have to force it in there. It goes right in. Put the sway bar nut back on it. Tighten it up. And you gotta tighten these bolts.
little like splines on them. Where's it at? It's hard to see. The splines. So you gotta tap them with a hammer. Get the spine started so the bolt doesn't turn. Tight. Go down here. Plug in our ABS. Make sure you hear the click. Put the plastic clip back on the spindle right there. Put this thing back in the bracket. Just like that. Focus. Focus. I don't know why you won't focus. All right. So I was back in. Um, now I just got to install the brake line. Attach that. All right, now that the brake line's tight, we have the CV nuts tight, the lower strut nuts and bolts tight, we have the sway bar nut tight, the ABS line plugged in, brackets in, so now we just need to reinstall the tail rod. Mil. Obviously, you don't have to use um, air like I am, but it's nice. Gotta put pressure on it. Alright, that's tight. So just double check, make sure everything's tight. Everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this tire straight. Um, now we just need to go up top and tighten the upper upper bolts up here, the nuts. These are uh, 13 millimeter or half inch. So we're just going to go ahead and tighten those. Alright. Now we got the bottom all tightened up and everything. Um, go ahead and tighten these three upper strut nuts. Just nice and snug by hand. You don't need to use an impact or anything on this. Um, we do recommend using red or blue Loctite. Um, they are stainless steel flange nuts. Um, it should work pretty good. Like I said, we do recommend Loctite if you got it. If you don't, no big deal. Alright, so that's one side of how to do the Bronco Sport. Uh, this is a first edition, so it's an inch and a quarter level lift spacer. And um, we'll go ahead and show you the rear here in a little while. Thanks. Okay, now we're on the rear. We're gonna do the, gonna do the subframe drop down here and here. But first we're gonna do the coil spring. I already removed the 15 millimeter bolts, the lower air bolt to spindle, and lower air to shock. And now, let's see, I'm just going to push down on the lower arm. Remove the coil. So now we have the open. We're going to take this off. You can just pry this off with a screwdriver. It's got a little, little nipple on it. Just pop it up. Take that off. All right, so now you're going to separate the rubber from the plastic. You just take this off. I'm trying to do it one hand. So you just take the rubber off the plastic. There's the plastic, or the rubber. And then now you just put the rubber onto the new piece. pushes right on. And then we'll just line it up with the coil. Um, from the factory, you can see the, the marker marks. 
the coil so the coil will come around here and stop and the coil should have a blue mark on it also all right so here's the lift spacer that's sitting on the oops sitting on the lower arm you can see how it's clocked let me show you so you have a like a finger width gap right here this is going to go towards the tire the closest where these tubes touch are going to go towards the inside of the vehicle and then we put the rubber back on Pops on like that. That's how it sits. All right, so now that the spacer is in, we're gonna go ahead and put the coil back in. So with one hand, you're gonna push down on the lower arm. I don't know if you guys can see that. Push down the lower arm. All right, so we're gonna put the coil spring back in. Here's the spacer, it just sits right in there. You're gonna go ahead and push down on the lower arm. Here, let me see. It's that easy, you just push down the lower arm and put the upper, put the upper coil in. Should, should look like that. So I got the marks. Here's the marks right here from the factory. So I got the marker to marker on the upper. And then that's the way it should sit on the bottom. Marker to marker right here. And then while you still have the lower arm disconnected, you're gonna go to the front trailing arm pivot bolts, which are these right here. We're gonna go ahead and take those out next. Those are gonna take a spacer. And these are also um, 15 millimeter. So these are the trailing arm spacers that we're gonna put in the new bolts and the new spacers go in between it. All right, so we're going to remove these 15. There's two. So now those are removed. You're gonna take your spacers and put them up in there. And take your new bolt. And just loosely start it. Take the other one. It's easier to do it when the lower arm is disconnected because there's no pressure on it. I mean, you could always do it after if you skip a step and, and do it, but it's just easier this way. There's no pressure on it. Set that up in there. All right, get that one started. Oops, you gotta get them hand started first. All right. All right, so the new bolts, the head of them are, um, 7 eighths or a 22 millimeter. So I just want to go ahead and 
Tighten these up. Chilling arm drop done. All right, using a jack, we're gonna jack up the lower arm and put it back in. It's gonna line up the shock. Shock bolt in. Now line up the spindle. Sometimes you gotta put a screwdriver in there to line it up. Get the bolt starter from the front. All right, now we got the lower spindle bolt through the A-arm and the shock bolt. These fall off and you forget. This one is the one that goes where the shot goes. So that one looks it's got more of a square. And then the where's that? The teardrop the teardrop one is for the spindle. We'll go ahead and tighten those up. All right, so this is how the rear should look all buttoned up. Space in there for the coil. Shock bolt, spindle bolt, all tight. Now we're gonna put the subframe drop down spacers in. Um, basically, this is the passenger side on this first edition, but go ahead and uh, do the same thing on the other side. It's the same process. Chilling arm drop bolts, coil spring spacer. That's the way it should look. All right, you want to make sure you have a jack underneath your lower arm before you take these bolts out right here, just so that it doesn't pop out. Once before. All right, now we're gonna loosen the factory subframe bracket that holds it to the frame, or body, I should say. We're gonna go ahead and loosen and replace them with the new bolts. Just one at a time and then keep them loose. Uh, these are uh, 18 millimeter. Make sure you have the rear differential supported before you loosen any of these bolts. All right, so we're going to remove the front subframe. I need an extension. Get through here. Take that bolt out. Factory bolt. Take the new supplied bolt. Put in there and hand start it. We'll do the same thing for the rear. And at the 
the same time, in the rear, I don't know if you can see this. So we have all the other three bolts in there, hand tight. Um, we got to the fourth one, took the, the factory fourth one out. And um, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and put the first spacer in. And you can put it washer down on top of that rubber. Let me go lower the jack a little bit. All right, so I just lowered the jack a little bit. Like I said, you're gonna put this in, washer down. So that piece goes up towards the metal. The washer goes on the rubber. Grab the bolt. Put the new bolt in. Just put it in hand tight. Okay, now that you have your rear subframe drop brackets in, you just hand tight. Uh, lower, you can lower the subframe just a little bit more and it'll keep it center. And then put the spacer in the front and then tighten up. Alright, so you can put the spacer washer down on the rubber. That piece goes towards the body. And be sure when you put these bolts back in that the cross member is pretty straight and just if they don't go in by hand don't force them. You don't want to cross thread these. If you cross thread these you're in big trouble. So just hand tighten these until it's snug. Making sure the spacer stays pretty centered. There you go. Okay, now here's the driver's side. Flat spacer down. Hand start them snug. If you're not wanting to go in, don't force it. Just reposition your jack, raise or lower. And sometimes they're, they'll get under pressure. All right, now I jacked it up to put pressure on all the spacers. Everything looks pretty centered. The bolts are centered. And you're going to go ahead and tighten those as tight as you can get them. All right, so this is how the rear should look. We got the subframe drop down, spacers in, new bolts torqued down, spacers there, the rear coil spacer to air. I'm gonna go ahead and set it down. And we'll take some measurements to see how much we got lifted. There's the passenger side. That's the way it should look. The spacer's in. Subframe spacer. Coil spacer. There's one more spacer that we're going to do in a minute. We have to drop right here for the exhaust. We drop the exhaust about a half inch. Just because it's close to the cross member right here. So I'll do just a little exhaust drop. Other than that, we're almost done. All right, so we're gonna put the exhaust spacers in. It's that bolt right there. Just because the exhaust gets close to the cross member or the subframe now that we dropped it. So it's a 10, 10 millimeter. Now that we took the bolt out, stud right here, 
how the exhaust, just one side. Don't do both sides, do one side at a time. You see now, it'll get it away from the cross under. So we're gonna space it down about a quarter inch. All right, so here's the exhaust spacers that go in between. All right, now that we got the half inch exhaust spacers on it, you can see now the distance between the exhaust and the cross member there. So it should be fine now. It shouldn't hit. Everybody will be dancing to the beat on the floor. You will 